Hello, and welcome back to General Chemistry 2. My name is Daniel, and in this video, we're going to start looking more in depth at acids and bases. You recall that early in uh, General Chemistry 1, we go over some basic acid-base neutralization reactions and their net ionic equations. Now we're going to look primarily at looking at acids and bases in terms of their differing strengths, as well as the concentrations of acidity or basicity that they create in solutions. So let's get started just by reviewing the definition of acid and base. The first, th the most uh, prominent definition is the bronsted lowry definition, which states that an acid is a species which donates a proton, and the base is something that accepts a proton. So as you see in the uh, reaction down here, we have an acid, the HCl, donating its acidic hydrogen, called the proton, to water, and it's going to cause the formation of this thing here called the hydronium ion. We can also write that as H plus. It's interchangeable. And then Cl minus is left from the acid. So the two pairs of things that are f formed here are we have the acid and its conjugate base. And then we also have the base and its conjugate acid. So when this neutralization ha reaction occur, when this uh, reaction occurs here, when HCl dissociates, it's going to have a base conjugate acid, acid conjugate base. We'll see. We'll ex investigate the relationship between these two a lot more in depth um, later in the video. For now, let's um, talk about looking at the um, concentrations of H plus and OH minus in water. These are the things that are going to determine whether a solution is acidic or basic. We measure acids by their H plus concentration, and we generally measure bases by their OH minus concentration. So the way we can relate those two terms is through looking at the autoionization of water, basically just breaking up water into H plus and OH minus. The equilibrium constant for this, known as Kw, is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14. And so then the product of H plus and OH minus is going to equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So you can use this relationship here to interchangeably convert between H plus concentration and OH minus concentration. So then what we can also say is that we can define whether a solution is acidic or basic based on the concentration of H plus and OH minus. So in an acidic solution, H plus's concentration is going to be greater than that of hydroxide, or greater than 1 times 10 to the negative 7. On the other hand, in a basic solution, there's going to be more OH minus than H plus, meaning that H plus is going to be less than 1 times 10 to the negative 7. And then finally, for a neutral solution, we're going to have the same concentrations for both, that being equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 7 because if you square that, you get 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So that's how we can initially look at how we define a solution as acidic, basic, or neutral. It depends on the amount of H plus versus the amount of OH minus. Another way we can look at that is through the logarithmic system known as pH and pOH. So if we take the concentration of H plus or OH minus and take what's known as the uh, P, or the negative log of each concentration, we get a new value that we can use to measure the um, acid as acidity or basicity of the solution. So you'll see that pH, for example, equals just the negative log of H plus. So that would mean if we had something like H plus equal to 1 times 10 to the negative fifth, right? pH would just be the negative log of that number. So that would just equal 5. So pH and pOH are just a lot on a logarithmic scale, meaning that a factor of magnitude, let's say we turn this into 1 times 10 to the negative 6, the new pH would simply be 6. So that means we decreased H plus concentration tenfold and got a pH increase of 1. That's how that logarithmic relationship works. You can look at the numbers there and play with it to explore that further. The uh, counterpart of pH is just simply pOH, which is the same thing, but with using OH minus concentration instead of H plus. 
And what we can derive is from that rel previous relationship we saw with kw, if we took the negative log of each species there, we would get the expression um, pH plus pOH is going to equal 14. So that's another, that's just a way we can interconvert between pH and pOH using that expression. And that would be indirectly looking at concentrations of each of those species. So pH and pOH are d the generally most common ways we're going to look at acid or base um, strength, the strength of an acid or the strength of a base. One other thing I should note about the pH is that the same way that we looked at, we said that an acid solution has a H plus concentration greater than 10 to the negative 7, that's also going to translate into pH. So in general, an acid solution is going to have a pH of less than 7. A basic solution is going to have a pH of greater than 7. And a neutral solution then would be a pH simply equal to 7. Because the negative log of H 1 times 10 to the negative 7 is 7. So next up, let's review strong and weak acids as bases. We, we went over that very briefly in General Chemistry 1. We're going to expand upon that a lot in uh, this unit. So a strong acid or base, as we know, is just something that fully dissociates into ions. So that means if you have a mole of HCl, it's going to form also a mole of H+. We can say there's approximately a 100% association to ions. On the other hand, a weak species, weak acid or base, is going to have a very partial ionization, maybe 1% or even lower, that we'll see. So what that means then is that less H plus is going to be generated, and it's not going to be in a stoichiometrical kind of fashion. So what we'll see later is that it's useful to look at equilibrium and apply the principles of equilibrium and equilibrium constants into looking at the behavior of weak acids and weak bases. Before we do that, we'll look a lot more at strong acids for now. So these are the common strong acids and strong bases. The majority of species that we encounter in chemistry are weak acids or weak bases, meaning they have only a very partial ionization. So it's just important to remember these and be able to recognize them as strong acids and strong bases. Otherwise, anything else you encounter is more than likely a weak acid or weak base. As you'll see later, we can tell that based on the value of K. One other thing I wanted to get into before we start looking at problems is looking at conjugate acid versus base strength. So there's an inverse relationship between the strength of an acid and the strength of its conjugate base. What we see in this table is just saying that as we increase the strength of our acid, we're decreasing the strength of our base meaning that the strongest acids have the weakest conjugate bases and the weakest acids have strong conjugate bases. So that's just that inverse relationship over there. You want to keep that in mind that, and it's going to be important when we look at salts later, that weak species form relatively strong conjugates, whereas strong species form ones that are pretty much could be said to be neutral. Okay. So what we're going to get into now is looking at the pHs of strong solutions, strong acids, strong base solutions. This is the, um, the most easy one. It's just going to be based primarily on stoichiometry. So here we have that the pH, what is the pH of this 1 times 10 to the negative 3 molar HCl solution? What we know, based on the fact that it's a strong acid, it's going to dissociate like so, form these things. You'll note that we left out H3O plus and we're substituted for just H plus. This is just kind of a shorthand way of writing what we saw in that first slide. So if we have 1 times 10 to the negative 3 molar of HCl and it dissociates fully, that means we're going to get the same amount of H plus. Then all we have to do to find the pH is simply plug it into this equation. So we're going to take the negative log of the H plus concentration, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 3. And so that gives us a pH of 3. So looking at the pH of a strong acid solution is relatively simple. Let's do the same thing now for a strong base. Let's look at the pH of a strong base. So we have NaOH. This goes...